Hello there, fellow humans, and welcome to another shop review. Starting off with the draws, the red defender draw, KPZ 68 draw, a and the antenna draw, where you can get the A25 Harry Hopkins the first. But uh, this is a tier 5, so that's not really worth anything. And the KPZ 68 is fine enough, but it is nowhere near worth actually spending your money on. But now we go into the offers tab. A lot of crates, a lot of other stuff in here. This thing, which you shouldn't buy, for example, crates are still not cool. So, a lot of stuff in the offer section here. In the resources, we got crates. Don't buy this. That's a bad idea. And then we have uh, these bundles, which are okay. There are better versions out there that include something useful instead of the customization container. So, not the best here, but it's better than the ones that include credits anyway. Then we get to the important section. That is the tank section. Now, both of these vehicles are solid. Right, the ML951 can do its job. It's very similar to the regular ML, so if you want the ML to grind creds, this could be your vehicle. If you don't have the regular ML1, there's no point picking up this one, because if you don't like the regular ML, you don't like this one. It's basically mostly the same vehicle, and the 122TM is a slightly inferior Chimera, so there is that. I would personally recommend the Chimera over this one. Um, it's got 7 degrees of compression, good accuracy, 400 alpha damage, Good enough ability. The armor is fine, but the capoles are pretty big and can be hit quite easily. Um, so, not the best of vehicles, but definitely up there in terms of good vehicles. But remember, a good vehicle for a bad price ain't it. And that's what this is. 14,000 despite times fives in here being unlocked. I would say 14k for this bundle is too much. Be 12k, be 10k, it would be solid. 14, you're overpaying. So if you do want both of these vehicles, they are good. I will be playing this one later, uh, but you are going to overpay somewhat, especially in light of this thing, which they're both fine. But that's about it. So, KPZ70, it's fine. These are locked, which is not cool. I personally wouldn't buy this offer. It's a decent tank, but that's about it. It's an average vehicle at this point, and average isn't worth that amount of money in Tier 9. Then we have the Glory Hunters, which, I mean, just look at that. 30 euros for this one, 36. For 6 euros more, you can get another extra tank in the Barask. And if you just buy it for the gold, you're also getting more XP, obviously, for both of them. But here's the thing. This is the one that I would recommend at tier 9 medium. The T55A is a complete joke. So this one is going to be the one. Show your chore. It's fine. I personally don't like it. Um, so this is the one that I would recommend. It's a more well-rounded than the Shafir Shore. It's not just as gun-focused as that one. And uh, the Barask, it's a very good tank in the hands of a great player. It's not OP, as some people say, but it is a very capable vehicle in the hands of the right player, especially with the two-shot autoloader that you can just run around the battlefield and attack from pretty much any side, any time. It is going to be a very potent vehicle. 17.5k, though, is, in my opinion, just a little bit too much. But if you do want them... They're still there, and both of the vehicles are quite good. That's not, though. The Sumo SM is the placeholder for the T-77. At a time when a T-77 was incredibly overpriced, this was a decent deal, but now, when you can have the T-77, you don't need this one. It's fine, but I personally would not recommend this bundle whatsoever, especially because the MX-CDC is in here, which is a giant waste of space. At least the times 5s are unlocked, so maybe that's something... But I generally don't recommend that one. We have the Untamed Fury, 12.5k for three tanks. It's an okay price here. Um, especially because the times fives are unlocked as well here. So price is fine. The problem with this bundle is T2065, while being a decent tank, it is getting overshadowed by a T4082, by a T77, by well, a lot of other tiers, eight me uh, heavy tanks. The uh, Super Pershing, it's just not good. Like this vehicle is just not any good. Which is unfortunately something that a lot of tier rate premium tanks suffer from. This thing is just not that good. The T23, obviously no use to grind credits with it. Can be fun, but to be honest, if you're a tank collector, it could be something useful. If you're trying to actually do something with these vehicles, like you're trying to play for performance, you're trying to play uh, to make a lot of credits, this is not going to be it. And that is the tank section. 
And there is the new Burning Gears event, which is basically just a carbon copy of the Christmas events with the sand globe instead of the snow globe. And the sand globe is just a massive container in disguise with all of these vehicles included right here. And then we also have these crates here, 5% drop chance for the sand globe here, and then 2% drop chance with the drop chance here um, in the music case. You can buy 50, your drop chance is 1 in 50, so you're probably not even going to get one if you spend all your free XP on that, so I don't recommend doing that. Now, the rest of the event, you can uh, get boosters and credits and stuff like that, so make sure to play it through and possibly get this sand globe for free because... These things do include useful things. And full disclosure, this is a press account. I didn't actually buy this. This was provided to me by Wargaming. So don't be like, oh, I open these. So no, this is a Wargaming provided crate right here. So basically, you can see what's in them. You've got a quest. You've got more gambling. Um, you've got camouflages. You've got a vehicle, for example. And that's what's in these crates. I highly recommend not buying these at all. Because, you know, you're going to get a tank. But you're not even going to get the globe in the first place in most cases because the drop chances for these is very low. So just play the event normally and don't spend your money on that. Here we go with the ML1951. What is this vehicle good at? Well, yeah, being in a hull down position and sniping tanks from there with the three shot auto lever and then disappearing again. The problem is the turret armor on this vehicle is a lot easier to pen than that on the ML1. So you have to be quite careful with who you peek, because if you're peeking it's your eight tanks to it, you are gonna get penned quite easily. Even some high penetration heavy tanks can go straight through the turret on this vehicle, so be very careful with that. However, another advantage of this thing is that it is very small compared to other vehicles. So if you keep this thing moving, look at, look at the size of this thing, it's tiny. So are Swedish people that small? Do they fit in here? I don't know. But um, other PSA, if you interact with small people, don't send them explicit material. That's another, that's the random top tip of today. But now, uh, let's see. Star is not going to be in a position of cover for the next shot, but he is now. Going to go for the reload here. Okay, it's always about opportunity. Like, no matter what tank you play, the operation is going to be very similar each battle. You always look for the opportunity. Where do I find damage without getting damaged? And then you adjust that to the parameters of the vehicle. How fast can I get there? How likely am I to get penned? How high is my DPM? Can I fire upon the enemy? Do I have enough gun depression? Right? Like, you find an opportunity and then you figure out how to best approach that opportunity with your tank's characteristics. Let's see, obviously you have to know them. You also have to know the map. That is kind of how it works. For now, right here. I found an opportunity. He's a lonely vehicle. I send it. And now I've also at the same time positioned myself for a nice little flank on the enemy team. So while doing this, I've already set myself up for the next maneuver. And I'm going to use that time to reload. That is especially very important for playing autoloaders. You always have to give yourself space to sit back and reload. And unfortunately, this guy seems to be AFK. So that is a bit of a um, terrible damage here. Not a lot of dignity in this one. And unfortunately, he stays on a little bit of hit points. However, if you do find an AFK enemy, I always recommend taking them out. Because they do wake up. They're going to be a threat again. Just like he just woke up there. And if he does have the heat and he does hit me, then he could have done something. But he did not. There we go. That. Do I have the time to go for the reload? Yes, I do. And now, I will be, hopefully, trying to find the O and the MX to get some damage in here. Because I haven't really done much yet. It's been a very good team. That's another thing. If your team's too good, you might struggle to find a damage. And here's the MX. I will reload just as I get around this pile right here. And look at that. Isn't that wonderful timing? Almost as if I planned it. So, let's see. Six, that's not going to be it. I got one shell. I'm going to go for the reload again here. And the next one's going to be the Yaw. Just going to wait that out. Obviously, I could have waited with that one shell uh, for the Ice-5 to possibly peak. But that's not really going to be worth it. I'm just going to sit here and wait. He's currently nice in the line of fire. There's only two allies left. I'm still full HP because I haven't actually fought anybody. 
that's another very important tip. If you want to do a lot of damage, you're going to do that damage at the start of the battle and at the end of the battle. And ideally, you also want to stay on a reasonable amount of hit points to actually fight at the end of the battle as well. So let's see. Here comes Leo. He's actually pushing forward. Both of my teammates are low. They're going to go down. Um, it's sort of an even fight here. Leo has a very big disadvantage because he doesn't have a real autoloader. And he's now firing off shots. That immediately tells me he's not a great player. Um, so what I have to do now is essentially simply play on my clip. Right? I clip him, I disappear, and then I reload and I appear again. Because he doesn't have that advantage that I have right here. Count fire multiple times. There we go. He's down. Got the T-77 over there. The Yor has to also waste his time with that. He can't just push forward and get... Okay, he just can. He's not good. Let's just put it that way. He's not good. Because if he was, he would have actually gone for the T-77 and wouldn't have gotten himself shot. But, uh... Uncool. Very uncool. Well, that's a game in the ML 1951. Very anticlimactic. Five kills, 4,000 damage. Didn't really have to work hard for it. But, um... Yeah. The tank can do well in the hands of the right player. I guess. So that... It's a first class. Not too bad. So with that said, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Maybe you learned something. And with that said, see you on the next one. Goodbye.